Hello, pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP pre-calc. This is Mr. Bean, and today's lesson, we're gonna finish up uh, the 2.5 material with uh, modeling. Uh, and this one will focus a bit more on this thing called percent increase, percent decrease, and then a little bit of how to rewrite some formulas. That'll be a little bit trickier part with this. So the first part is just recognizing when we have a percent increase or decrease. So if it's increasing, it is growing. And so I have here the written out statement of one plus percent increase. So what we're trying to do here is we're starting with an initial amount A. However much we start with, we're going to grow with a percent increase. So for example, if I said we had a 97% increase, if that's what we were doing, then we would have the base of the exponent would be one plus, we would take the percent and convert it to a decimal. So we'd have one plus 0.97, therefore the new base would be 1.97. So a 97% increase would look like this for the base. Okay, so we're, we take the percent increase, convert it to a decimal and add it. This one, if we were uh, decreasing instead of increasing, then we would have to subtract it from one because if you multiply by one, it stays the same. Multiply by something bigger than one, like this one, it grows, multiply by something that's between zero and one, it will get smaller. So for example, let's say I have a 5% decrease. If you're decreasing by 5%, that means we would say one minus, and you take the decimal form, 0 0.05, so that's the 5%, and then that would equal a 0 0.95. So the base of the exponent would be 0.95 if you had a 5% decrease. Okay, so let's take this into practice. Let's try this a little bit here. So identify the percent increase or decrease of each function. So for the first one, the, we'll only have to focus on the base. What are we multiplying by? The base of the exponent. Since we're multiplying by a number larger than one, this thing is increasing. So what I'm gonna say is that 1.2 is going to equal, okay, let me state, state this. For most of you, you'll probably be able to just look at this and tell immediately. You won't have to do many algebra or anything like that. I'm just writing this out because it is tricky for some kids. They get lost in this. So I'm going to say that it's a one plus however much we're increasing by. Uh, now let's solve for how much are we increasing. So subtract one from both sides. We get 0 0.2 equals how much we're increasing by. And therefore I can now see it's, 0 .2, it's increasing by 0 0.2. Therefore it is a 20%, move the decimal twice, 20% increase. Okay, now some of you are like, oh my gosh, Mr. Bean, why did you do that? That was so easy to just look and see it's 0.2 above one. Well, the reason I do that is because this decreasing part is where kids get thrown off sometimes. So watch, I know uh, it's gonna be 0 0.7 equals, now it is one, is it plus or minus? Well, this is decreasing because it's below one. So I will say one minus how much it's decreasing by, subtract one from both sides, I get a negative 0 0.3 equals, a negative however much it's decreasing. Uh, the negatives will cancel itself, themselves out, divide both sides by a negative. And so the 0.3 is the decreasing uh, part of this. If we convert it to a percent, we'd say 30% decrease. Okay, so now if you can look at this and just see it's 0.3 below one, then you're done, you got it, you can just do that. But if you're not sure about it, then this is the way you just solve it by hand. Okay, and then one last one, uh, just to show you that sometimes they get a little crazy. 0 0.025 equals one, and now there's this plus or minus. Well, it's below one, so this is decreasing. This function's a decay, percent decrease, so it's one minus however much it's decreasing by, and subtract the one. We get negative 0 0.9, well, what is that, 75 equals the negative decreasing. The negatives will cancel. We get the 0.975, move the decimal twice, and we have a 97.5 percent decrease. So this original function up here, this demonstrates that you're decreasing the number four by 97.5% for every X. Okay, so now with that, let's also do some other scenarios where you have to write the equation. This one's a little easier. Uh, the, really, it's just coming up with uh, the, the model. That's all we're doing, writing out the model for this. So we're gonna do numbers four and six together. So what's the uh, Holmes value V? So we're gonna say V of T equals, now I said V of T because I've got the Holmes value of V and of, is this, and it's increasing by 1.5% per year. So if it's increasing 1.5, that means it's gonna be one plus 0 0.015. So that's going to equal 1.015. That's my base of the exponent. So I have my initial amount, 
200,000. Multiply it by 1.015, and then my exponent is the variable t. That's how we set this up. Okay, now let's jump down to number six, because this one is uh, decreasing. I want to show you an example of decreasing real quick. So since it's decreasing, it's going to be one minus the percent, move the decimal twice, so 0 0.281. That's going to give us 0 0.719, and I had to grab my calculator to double check that. So 0 0.719, that's my base. So then I will say, what are my variables that are used in square feet of grass? G uh, per every T, so G of T equals, the initial amount was 1800. My, I'm multiplying it by 0 0.719, so that represents a 28.1% decrease, and then raise to the T. All right, so these are the, this one's an increasing, that's a decreasing, so over here you have an increasing, here you have a decreasing. Pause this video, give this one a shot on your own, just try these two out real quick, see if you get the right answer. And there we have our two answers. So you can double check and see that you did yours right. Don't forget your variables according to the problem. Uh, 3.05. So that seems kind of weird to just remember that represents to a 205% increase. And then you can check your answer on that one. Okay, so now let's move on in our lesson and talk about half-life and doubling time. These are really common uh, things that come up in, in science classes. You've probably seen these before where you have half-life and a doubling time. Well, there are specific formulas that can help us. So for half-life, if we have an initial amount, A, and that A is going to be shrinking by half. That means we have a half-life. So if it shrinks by half every H, whatever H stands for, it could be a certain number of years, a certain number of months, a certain number of weeks, whatever. So what we do is we can have this formula where we have the initial amount and we're gonna multiply it by a half every T over the half-life. So again, H is the half-life for this. T is our actual variable. So it's F of T, so T is the time. So you'll see when, when, when I give you a scenario here, you'll see how this works a little bit easier. And then we get the doubling time and it's very similar. We have an initial amount A, it's going to be doubling every D. So D is how long it takes for that amount to double. And then you get this. So you have the initial amount A, you're gonna multiply it by two to double it. And then, th okay, that doesn't look like it's, this is supposed to be in the exponent. So don't get that confused. That right there is inside the exponent. It's two raised to that, like it is up here. So it's two over D, D is the doubling time. Gosh, okay, that's annoying me that it doesn't look right. Uh, all right, so T is, or excuse me, D is the doubling time. So if, if we said it doubled every six months, then that D would be a six, and T would represent the months. Okay, so let's, let's just try a couple of these problems real quick. They're not too bad. So here we have 150 grams of a radioactive material. Its half-life is 4,400 years. So we'll say G of T equals our initial amount is 150 grams we are doing half-life so we'll have a one half here raised to the t over the half-life the half-life is 4400 there's our function that models this scenario now why does this work because if you said that t equals 4400 if we just plugged in a 4400 to this that exponent would become the number one so how many halves would we be taking one We'd be multiplying by 150 one time. If I doubled that and said T is 8,800, and you plug that into the time here, that whole exponent would become the number two. 8,800 divided by 4,400 is the number two. So how many times would we be taking a half-life? Twice for 8,800. So that's why that works. All right now, the doubling time, so it's the same concept. Uh, we're gonna say D for descendants. So Mr. Bean's parents currently have 95 descendants. This is actually true as of right now when I'm making this video. I know I got I got a large family. So then the number of their descendants is doubling every 15 years T. So D of T will equal, our initial amount will be 95. We're doubling now, so I'm gonna multiply by two. How often? T over 15. That's my exponent. So if 15 years goes by, it would be doubling once because 15 divided by 15 give you one. Okay, and then that's it for that. And now our last portion of our lesson is what's called equivalent forms. So we can, we can have different uh, equivalent forms of an exponential function and it gives us some other information. So for example, let's say uh, this here, if I have t represents the number of weeks, then the base of this function here 
1.01, is going to indicate that the quantity increases by a factor of 1.01 every week. So every one week, we increase by a factor of 1.01, okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, what about this? If I change it and you saw this, 1.01 raised to the 52nd power, raised to the t over 52. This, these 52s would end up canceling each other. If I, uh, if you did power to a power, that power property means the 52s would cancel and you'd get right back to this. So it is equivalent. But what does this indicate? It indicates that the quantity increases by a factor of 1.01 .01 to the 52nd power every year. So that, because there's 52 weeks in a year, this original one is just for weeks, right here. This is just for weeks. So this one would represent that factor is how much it's increasing by every single year. Okay, so this will be, you'll see some of these types of problems. I know that sounds a little confusing, so just see if this one makes sense. So if I have three raised to the D, and that indicates that the quantity is increasing by a factor of three every day, then what does this indicate? What does this represent? Three raised to the seven. So if we're talking about days originally, then three to the seven is going to represent week, a uh, one week now, right? And this is, uh, the exponent is D over seven. So this is equivalent because the sevens would cancel. So the way we write our answer is, we would say that the quantity increases by a factor of three raised to the seventh every week. That's what this, this form indicates. Okay, so you're just trying to take what they give you and then rewrite it. What is the new quantity indicate? Okay, excuse me, not the new quantity, the new form of the equation. What does that indicate for us? It just gives us some other information for it. All right, so that's everything for this lesson. Rock that master check, and I will see you back in our next one.